Does he know we have to shut the door? Is it, is it, oh, where's the camera? Oh, there it, is a couple. It's the camera view, so she started. Okay, so good evening and welcome to the Open Space and Recreation Plan Forum for the 2017 updates. So this year is, well, I'm Rebecca Longwell. I'm the new conservation agent in town. And I had the privilege of working on the Open Space and Recreation Plan updates with an informal subcommittee. I had multiple of the other community members. Um, so this year is so special to be updating the Open Space and Recreation Plan in its entirety because this year marks the 50th anniversary of having open space. So the first date where this was enacted, when the first Conservation Commission was appointed at annual town meeting in 1967 to promote and develop natural resources and protecting the water resources as well, which falls under natural resources. So here we have 50 years of open space and recreation created by the town for the town. Um, so we started off with the community input or community participation there you go. Um, that consisted of a survey that was distributed with the census that went out in the beginning of 2017, the end of 2016. And that survey um, allowed us to gather more data from what the community is calling for. And understanding that most of the responses were most likely biased to an extent because some individuals may not pick up an open space survey or go to the website or go into town hall where there's a paper version distributed. However, the survey did break down six different goals that throughout time has basically held true in terms of what the community would like um, and what they want to preserve in town. Number one was to preserve rural and historical characteristics of Bolton. And that's something that not only people that come into my office or individuals I talk to throughout the community, but also now through this survey, they show that this is something that not only attracts new residents to Bolton, but something that keeps people here. The second goal was to protect water resources of Bolton. Bolton is primarily or primarily depends on well water, so that's obviously important. And number three is to preserve and encourage agricultural practices. Bolton is a right to farm community, and as everyone knows, we do have quite a few larger farms. Uh, number four is to protect natural resources and wildlife habitats. Number five, conserve open space for public use, as you can see through our trails and trail guide. And goal number six, to provide recreational opportunities to Bolton citizens. So this is just basically showing a summary of the statistics that were gathered. Um, we had 291 respondents complete it. And again, understanding that there may be some bias in terms of who completed it um, as to the interest that was involved. And we also left a small box at the bottom of the survey to basically just have an open comment of maybe there's a new goal to be added, maybe there's a new activity that the community wants or a new property or maybe we have enough. And the top answers were that the community was calling for hunting areas, great reviews from for the trail guide. Uh, quite a few people said, oh, we love the trails, we love the trail guide. Um, some sort of regulations around dog walking uh, because there's either multiple dogs or someone had commented that their child was jumped on and that's something we see throughout our conservation properties is we have professional dog walkers that come with multiple dogs that are all off leash and unfortunately that's something that we're still dealing with but the conservation commission is working on a potential bylaw for that um, also, beekeeping information was something that a few community members called for. No new taxes, obviously. Um, 
and also suggestions on how to create a more accurate survey in the future in terms of broadening the scope of who we're surveying to attract those other individuals who may not be as fond of open space or as fond of using the open space as others may be. So the Open Space and Recreation Plan 2017, um, we had an increase in population from 2013 to 2016. Sorry about that. Um, the population had an increase of about 300 individuals with an increased population. You need places to house those individuals, so therefore there's increased development. Um, since the last open space and recreation plan, we've had 367 acres of fostered developments, meaning that when a developer comes in, they have an option to propose open space land or propose a traditional um, development, which is not including that in a complete developed area. Obviously, Bolton encourages the Frostbridge development, and therefore we have more um, open space acreage coming in to use as trails, public access, or just simply preservation. Uh, the total open space also increased from 2004 to 2017. And this chart is basically just showing the breakdown of that protected areas and the change. The blue shows in 2004 uh, the various categories of open space and protected acres. So I'm going to explain in a minute what the protected acres breaks down to in terms of defining it. Here it's just simply today the acres protected, so not in perpetuity. And that is the Town of Bolton or Bolton Conservation Trust properties, the conservation restriction and agricultural preservation restrictions, and the municipally owned or town owned not for conservation or recreation, and the chapter land under chapter 61 which protect or holds the property for tax purposes under forestry, recreation, or agriculture. Excuse me. Yes. yes. In that light to be able to see the screen better. Uh, yes. We're on the <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. And so there was one municipal property sold that is not usual, but that's why you see a slight decrease. What property was that? Uh, and you get back to you on that. Okay. So it was it was municipal? It was municipally owned. And it was, um, I need to double check, but I believe it wasn't under conservation, but that's what it would have gone into had it not been sold. <clears throat> so as I said, I was going to define and break down protected acres. So the last slide showed at this present moment the comparison between, sorry, between the 2004 and 2017 protected acres in Bolton. So this, again, those properties aren't all protected in perpetuity as explained here. So the conservation restriction, the agricultural preservation restriction, APR and CR listed here, land owned by the Bolton Conservation Trust, hello, and land owned by the town and categorized as the Conservation Commission acting. So there's conservation or recreational use on those properties owned by the town. The Frostbrid included is included in the in the above category. So in the actual open space document, you'll see them listed twice, but they're not counted twice. So there's a breakdown of the development of open space and the developed areas with open space and then basically who holds the CRs on those and who owns the land, which is split between both the Conservation Commission and the Conservation Trust. Unimproved land, meaning land that has yet to be developed but is neither municipal or um, owned by the trust itself or held under a conservation restriction. That is counted towards the total protected acres because 
at that time it's not developed so it counts as open space this is a calculation that had been done in the past uh, for comparison purposes so I'm simply following that same method um, the chapter land again is not permanently protected um, for that's more of a tax incentive and it's great it does protect the property for various uses but again it's not a forever um, saving grace I guess we'll say the privately owned properties that remain unprotected such as on improved land that I was just discussing again not in perpetuity so the table at the bottom breaks down the total acres acreage for the town just as a whole developed and undeveloped and unimproved and protected um, and then the land protected in perpetuity under the CR APR the trust the Conservation Commission also um, the parks and recreation managed properties as well as under that category the unprotected or temporarily protected we'll call it is the chapter land unimproved land or municipally owned <laughs> land that can potentially be developed for municipal purposes so the other 5,000 acres I'm sorry can I interrupt yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other 5,000 acres is approximately is developed land yes okay yep and we actually have I'm working with um, our town planner to basically break that amount down and see what exactly it amounts to that'd be cool um, yeah, that's something that they requested when I got comments back from planning board. So we're working on that right now. I apologize, I did not time this right. But, so the open space and recreation areas are maintained by these three major groups, the Conservation Commission, Parks and Recreation Commission, and the Bolton Conservation Trust with obviously much appreciated work and efforts from our volunteer land steward who also heads the Bolton Trails Committee and all of their wonderful volunteers, the Department of Public Works, and also our other community volunteers. So a few questions that came up or a few comments that came up in the Open Space and Recreation Plan survey was that one, there's a lack of information on why do we protect open space what's the impact or even laws for protecting uh, water resources or natural resources in general um, we've already started working on that um, we have done a world water day do a reading and a little activity with the kids and the parents same thing with earth day to sort of just expose people to what makes Bolton special in terms of preserving those resources. So for instance, Bolton has the 25 foot buffer around any wetland resource area. That's, I have not heard of another town that has that specific buffer. Some have a little bit larger, some have a little bit less, but that's a no touch that's specific to Bolton itself. Um, and so benefits of permanently protected open space consist of like I was just getting into water resource protection as we primarily run on well water reduction of erosion reduction of excess nutrients and runoff passive and active recreation as we see on our trails or sports fields um, mental, mental and physical health benefits reduction of sedimentation and of course resource and habitat preservation something that was also mentioned in the survey was non-specific open space use so not necessarily a sports field but maybe a field that people can picnic on and have sports but there's no line so it's not a specific use for like I said sports or a specific school activity but rather open for the public to translate as what they want to use it for yes um, so when it comes to the water research Yep, so these are sort of two things. One thing is that additional development obviously adds strain on the aquifer itself. Right. But is there is there documentation, is there, are there studies that also show that there's actually an impact on overall quality as well as quantity when you have more development? In terms of the water resources? Yeah. Um, there is not a study specific to Bolton itself that I know of anyways, okay. but 
in general, that's actually my background is environmental studies and sustainable development. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of, I guess, a common sense connection. If you have increased runoff and erosion, you're going to have increased nutrients and excess nutrients in the waterways, whether it's good or bad. And with excess nutrients, it could be a nutrient that's there regularly. But when it's in a grouping, it might cause more algae, it might cause um, incorrect levels of oxygen in the water or acidity that impacts the wildlife further down. Um, so that sort of thing. Also in terms of reducing the ability to infiltrate, if you have large amounts of algae, large amounts of basically like caked vegetation, it's going to infiltrate but not as well as if it can flow through it gradually. Yeah, it does. I guess I'm more concerned, okay. like, if we were to, like, so there is, there are studies out there in general right. that, okay. that do demonstrate this, whether or not they're here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, yes. So, I already add to that food security. Yes, exactly. That's so what we're That should be on there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can add that as well. And there is, this is a very brief summary, I guess, of the entire document. Um, I don't know if you've read it yet. I know Martha has, <laughs> but there are quite a, a few comments. I've read through it a couple of times. Yeah. So, so um, it is mentioned in terms of highlighting the agricultural practices and food security in that sense. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I'll definitely add something about how the water resource protection increases the food security. But food security itself is is ag if agriculture is open space. Right. Permanently. That space. that that creates food security for Bolton to right. have the here so right so even beyond the water resource yes yeah. and civilization collapses yeah right <laughs> yeah. Oh, next week yeah <laughs> as soon as he gets back from overseas yeah <laughs> no 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 so <coughs> again this is just commenting on so bolton is one of only 50 of the 351 cities and towns in massachusetts that has no public water supply which basically just highlights the importance of private wells and water resource protection specific to Bolton. Again, why we have the 25 foot no touch on top of the 100 foot and 200 foot, depending on what type of wetland resource you have. Um, but also, I don't know, it's something that I think being a new employee of the town, it's something that I think the community takes pride in and should take pride in. Um, being one of only 50. Yes. I don't know if we have to say our names, Martha Reddington. Is that 25 foot added to the 100 or 200, or no. is it taken out? It's taken out. <coughs> so it's, it's but it's inviolate. Yes. Yep. Thank you. So these are just some of the conservation properties that we currently have. Um, as you can see, we have various forms of habitat. This one's highlighting a filtered forest habitat at Gold White property, and we have some woodpecker activity going on. And the Fifeshire Dam Conservation Area, which this is one of our properties that was actually gifted to the town. Um, the town does acquire from gift and purchase, um, along with conservation restriction easements and APR easements. Uh, as you can see, we also have crayfish there. <laughs> which is very astounding that it's such a large spe specimen. It means our resources are good and healthy. <laughs> and then we have Vaughn Hills, which you can enter from the Mullen and Green Road parking areas. And this is an image of the dammed up pond that was caused from beaver activity, which is throughout town, <laughs> as everyone's aware. So this is a map that we are currently tweaking a little bit, but this is actually one of the most important maps I think of the Open Space and Recreation Plan because it shows over time that obviously the town didn't just acquire all this land at once. It sort of puzzle pieced it together and this is showing it year by year what's been acquired um, to give us <coughs> later on, I'll bring up the map that basically shows or does show, not just basically, all of the conservation properties and conservation restrictions that we currently have in Bolton. 
So this is just, these are, so the following slides are the required maps and documents for the open space and recreation plan. Um, so this is just simply the locus map. We have the regional context in terms of watersheds. And as you can see, we have quite a few um, connecting us into other areas. This is Bolton lands protected and developed since 2006. Again, we're adjusting it slightly um, to be a little bit more accurate, but again, we have more land protected than developed. Um, we no longer, this is an edit on the title, we no longer have a water resource protection district, but this is water protection resource areas as well. I apologize for the slides, it's going forward too fast. Um, so this basically shows the aquifers in the main wetland areas. Although, as I'm sure all of you know, our water resources and uh, resources that are above ground as well are basically uh, sprinkled throughout town. <laughs> so we have the zoning map. Specific to Bolton, we have the Limited Recreation Business District, um, which includes the International and Twin Springs Golf Course. And that basically allows for minimal development of an area for a business. So that whomever owns the property, hoping it stays the international, but if it is not in the future, they're limited to what they can do on that property. Yes? Are there any uh, controls or restrictions on the types of chemicals they use to manage the grass for this well? <sighs> <laughs> my thought is yes. I need to double check on that though. Yes. There are because a couple of years ago they got fined for using over the poundage of certain chemicals and things. Okay. And so that's what I thought I remembered, but I just <laughs> wasn't sure. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. And again, different soil types. So as you can see, we're quite diverse not only in population, but also in our soils. This is just floodplain overlay district. Aquifers in Bolton, we are lucky enough to have quite a few, and thus those areas are part of the focal point of what needs to remain protected. Um, the larger aquifer to the top left is Bolton Flats primarily, so that's owned by the state and will is perpetuously protected. So that's important. And then also Delaney over to the top right of the town boundary. Uh, that's also protected in perpetuity. And the other aquifer that's sort of an upside down L shape, that is West Pond and Little Pond. And we have the Boy Scout camp and the Old Girl Scout camp around there. So if the Boy Scouts own it, it's protected for quite some time. but. We don't know what will happen in the future, so that's important to keep an eye on as well, along with the other small pockets. So this map is also important to Bolton because, again, we are a right-to-farm community. We have quite a few larger farms in town, such as Bolton Orchards, uh, Bolton Spring Farm, and the Neshoba Valley Winery, along with all the other smaller roadside farms that people like to stop at, which was again something that came up on the survey. And I think the next time it's updated, we need to include some sort of an inventory just in general about how many smaller agricultural practices there are because it's not highlighted as much because they're not a commercial farm, but those are also important to highlight obviously. Yes. A lot of those soils aren't currently being used for farmland. Right. <clears throat> Which is why it's an important map to include because not only is it not being used currently for farmland, but in the future, once it's developed or once it's been used for something else, you can affect those soils and they're less productive. In the f um, yeah. So that's another thing that we took in consideration in terms of what we want to protect and what needs to be highlighted in the action. So this is also another resource area that we have 
quite a bit of in Bolton and that is certified in potential vernal pools. And a vernal pool does not need to be certified to be protected um, relative to the species that are there or the seasonal uh, water levels that are in place basically. So this is a map just showing unprotected parcels with habitat significance. This is an overlay from the natural heritage and also um, where the vernal pools are. These are all the lands enrolled in current use programs, so that's under Chapter 61. And as you can see, we have the international for recreational purposes. We have a few for forestry purposes, which is in the green, and of course, agricultural purposes in the tannish beige color. So this is a map again, just, I guess, bringing up again what I was talking about in terms of we have wetlands and water resources and groundwater just about everywhere in Bolton. Um, there are only a few areas that aren't um, affected by it or aren't in close proximity to it, but hello. in the grand scheme of things, it's all connected and the rivers flow into each other, so they're going to impact one another. These are unprotected parcels with scenic significance. This is the overlay um, that we have. It's actually on our GIS map online now. So this is a layer you can put on if you're unsure if you're home or if you're... Okay. Oh! Okay. <laughs> One second. time where you necessarily have enough but I think it's a time where we focus on the properties that we do have and bringing them up to uh, pace with what the community has been requesting in terms of um, passive recreation and active recreation there was a question regarding what sort of activities would you like to see in the future regarding open space there were answers regarding ice skating fishing hunting um, classes on gardening and landscaping or species identification different hiking opportunities so I think this is a good way to categorize all of that um, and see the conservation properties that we have and increase those activities on those properties um, the action plan just highlights in general areas we specifically chose not to point to 
a specific assessor's parcel or um, an area that would name someone's property. Instead, sorry, I'm just gonna let that go. <laughs> Instead, uh, we chose to highlight certain areas. And again, like I was explaining as we were going through the maps, those areas included the um, habitat that was specific to natural heritage, rare and endangered species, specific to the aquifers, groundwater, wetlands areas, uh, not in terms of encouraging the town to purchase wetland areas, but to say these are our resources. As I've said multiple times, we run primarily on well water. We have large agricultural practices, to, so just be mindful of any future development that does occur or where should we discourage development from happening uh, closer to resources that might be highly impacted where other areas might be less impacted in terms of our water or our prime agricultural soils or our other resources like the limestone quarries but most of those are already protected in rattlesnake so yeah any questions um well, I, I have one concern. I have here yes. this annual town report from Bolton to 2015. Okay. And according to the Affordable Housing Partnership Trust Fund, um, the board, uh, it says, we also have four lots of land that will be donated to the town as part of the requirement of the inclusionary zoning bylaw. One is the Houghton Farm and three are Gentry Mills. Yes. The developers have suggested they may prefer to donate a fair market value to the fund in lieu of the land. We reviewed the situation and determined the fair market value of 135000 is which is significantly lower than the 200 k benchmark of our bylaw. Which seems to me to indicate that they we didn't get any open space oh we did we got 100 acres from century mill and we have um let pull the exact number for hoping <coughs> almost 100 acres <coughs> at uh century mill yeah it's like 98.1 um so but we do you can actually go to Holton farm it's not a formal trail right now but there is a sign there and the open space is okay there. so this is incorrect yes that was my concern that this yes. doesn't seem to be consistent with what you're saying right unless i'm unaware um because i honestly didn't look into it because i know those properties exist mm -hmm. and the century mill estates that's still being formalized but there's a conservation restriction and um, it's being decided whether the Conservation Commission or the trust is holding the deed. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's not formalized, but it is protected. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, for Houghton, and I'm not sure what happened there. I'm unaware of that, but maybe it was something that was decided afterwards that maybe after it was published, they said, well, we're not going to use this property anyways. I'm not sure. Okay. But yeah, that, that is incorrect unless they did both but I do know there's big large uh, open space properties on both of those developments okay. Okay. <laughs> any other questions comments concerns mm -hmm. anything you would like to see noted I know we already mentioned the um, food food security security thank you I was a boss for a word there so I guess so because I'm part of the Agricultural Commission, um, mm -hmm. last year they passed, Massachusetts passed uh, a, a law that said that ag toms can now hold property oh, and cool. be responsible. Okay. So yeah. I guess my question would be whether or not um, that would be advantageous to Bolton for, I mean, I assume we'd have to now um, suggest a bylaw change to allow that to happen because presently the ag tom does, can't hold land. Right. But now since it's allowed statewide, would it be advantageous, do you think, for the ICOM to include that in our bylaws? I think it would. Um, from my perspective, especially since we have an increase in the APRs on various properties throughout town, I think, 
I mean, certainly someone coming into town who's not familiar with the different commissions and committees and who holds land, who doesn't. I think it would be more of the straight answer and more of a convenience to have ag compul APRs or agricultural land um, and then have the other like conservation commission or the trust hold conservation <coughs> specific to wildlife or recreation it, ju it just seems like common sense I guess but again I don't speak for Right. Entire commission, but in, in my opinion, that would make sense. Well, I was particularly thinking of it with this, and yeah. it's, you know, it's one thing to hold the land; it's another thing to manage it. Right. That it, the management can get passed over, and which is something that couldn't happen before. Right. Exactly, and that's something I think too, where at least to the best of my knowledge, AgCom has more. Actually, one of our commission members does have a lot of experience, obviously, in agriculture, but. Um, for the most part, I think you have the specialized group there in AgCom for agricultural properties. So it would it would only make sense to do something like that. Yes, Mark. Yes, Ms. Longall. I have a, co a question about that uh, okay. map that showed the well, it was a chart. It said total acres in Bolton, 12,800. Then it said protected acres and unprotected this one? acres. And with regard to that, yes. I've heard the number 61 bantered about. Yes. Um, this is about a small parcel that was a gift to the town mm -hmm. that I was shocked to see was on the short list of could be developed land that was owned municipally mm -hmm. versus all the other land which was protected in perpetuity. Yes. So, so who decides? where a new gift that's approved at annual town meeting goes to which list? Well, it is, if something's donated, it's the donor. Typically names, whether it's going to be held in conservation or held for recreational purposes or the town itself. To the best of my knowledge, um, in certain circumstances, it can change hands dependent upon uh, management practices or um, not enough resources to do so there's different circumstances if it's not specific so for example conservation properties are under uh, section 40 or article 97 um, so it's it's specific in the deed what it is to be preserved for however there are a few situations where things are donated to the town and they are simply saying we're donating it to the town to use to the best of their ability or to what the community needs at that time um, and then if they can't use it anymore sometimes they say we'll take it back or there are certain circumstances listed in the deed uh, for that as it arises yes well I happen to know that the deed is from 1918 on this property. Okay. So if it wasn't resurveyed, how would that be in the deed? Wouldn't it just be in the bequeathed property that was given to the town and then had to be approved by the town's people? Potentially. Um, I can look at that deed to get you the answer specifically. Well, thank you. Um, you find something. No problem. Um, but again, just the conservation properties that I'm familiar with in terms of donating land, it's either specifically noted in the language or it's not. Yeah, you're thinking but, of the Phillips and Rattlesnake Hill, yeah, all these huge things. Right. Even some of the small uh, conservation restriction properties that are privately held, those as well are um, specific in the language that's used to preserve it or to restrict it from various practices or to encourage specific uses. Uh, for that property, I'm, I'm really not sure what the deed says specifically, but I can Thanks. answer it very much. Thank you have a question for you? Oh, well, I guess I had a, a comment which may be irrelevant. That's okay. Um, <coughs> presumably, the land could be developed, donated to the, to the town and used to build a school. 
there are no restrictions built into it. Yes. It's up to the town what to do with it. Right. So, um, I mean, maybe that's all understood, but this particular property, everybody presumably understands is conservation, whereas actually the town could build a school on it. Or right. Or it could be W facility or something. Right. And that's why when we did the inventory, that's what we looked at. We looked at um, whether it specifically says conservation. Yeah which that property, I don't believe it does, but I can double check, like I said. Um, but, yeah, so the municipal properties, that's why they're listed in the unprotected or temporarily protected, because technically it's not likely, it's only happened once, but they can sell it or they can develop it for other municipal practices. Yes. So just just for the record and for yep. who's ever watching, can you can you name the committee and and explain how the committee got together? Like the subcommittee? Yeah, the sure. subcommittee that put this together and give you yes. get credit for what they did. Yes, definitely. And they are all named in the open space and recreation plan. So the individuals who formed the subcommittee um, were actually originally my predecessor, Carol Gombart and um, Liz Lacluse who is one of the commission members as well. Um, and then I worked with Liz as I got on board to form the subcommittee again and basically bring everyone back to the table and say, we need to get this organized. Um, huge, huge help on the survey was actually Fred Van Venicom. He helped with the survey collection of data along with the analysis. Um, He's a professional in that field, so it was helpful to have him do that analysis and collect it and share it with us and explain why there's certain biases and why there's not, um, and what we could expect and what the numbers mean. And we also had Emily Winner, who was a huge help as well in terms of doing the survey and then helping plan our steps moving forward. Um, she was an AutoCAD professional, and she also had some great family news so she had to sort of take a step back but she was still helpful throughout the process um, we had Jeff Lawrence who is our volunteer land steward and Bolton Trails Committee lead um, but he also helped do a few of the sections as well as well as edit the document multiple times we had Betsy Taylor Kennedy who was an excellent resource Specifically for me, even transitioning into the position I'm in now, but also in terms of this document, she basically has the entire inventory of the properties in her head, and we went through and double-checked everything multiple times, and we're still double-checking it because we want it to be the best document possible. We also had um, Ken True. Again, he did a few of the sections in terms of population and community settings. Um, Penny Gherkin again did the survey work and she was a huge benefit as well um, she was a former selectman as I understand it so she knows a lot of the history so as well as Ken Troop and then Al Ferry was a huge impact in terms of again bringing those resources to the table and the history um, of things that the rest of us may not know or how different properties change hands or the formal or, or informal easements that are on different properties throughout town. And then myself, <laughs> I worked on it, but we also had input from other individuals like Martha um, has given us multiple edits to the document along with, um, I don't know, just about everyone in town hall. Um, so it, it was very helpful and obviously our assessor, Cynthia, had helped a lot as well and she's still helping in terms of the analysis that I was talking about earlier. And so how did the committee get together? So it was basically we sent out a couple emails it was something that was hashed together before my time I guess I'll say and I sort of just picked it back up um, with Liz as the lead and then kept the ball rolling um, and it just sort of formed to be honest. Um, we sent out some information saying, you know, we're looking for open space and recreation people or people to work on the project and to have input, people who have time to write up the sections. 
and we all sat down and um, every two or three weeks we'd sit down and collect again and collaborate on okay what are we going to use we also used um, Stowe's formatting for their open space and recreation plan as they had higher reviews for, from theirs that they had just completed. So obviously Kathy and Jackie from Stowe were very helpful, also my predecessors. <laughs> um, and that was helpful as well since they had already been through the process. But again, it, it was a lot of collaboration, sitting at the table for a couple hours every two to three weeks and just hashing it out and then breaking it down so each individual could do their own section or sections and then come back to collaborate to make sure that either A, everything's covered or the various parties that may be concerned or may have different input could be heard and then again collaborated into this 175 page document. <laughs> And so, uh, if people wanted to look at the document now, would you still, are you still accepting yes. yep. inputs to it? I mean, yes. I think this is the part where you spiel that. Oh, <laughs> yes. So we're still accepting comments um, and edits. I'm in my office Monday through Thursday, um, typically 9, 2.30, but most of the time before and after then. Um, and if I'm not, I'm in the field. But again, if you have any questions, concerns, things that need to be included in the document, come in my office, give me a call, shoot me an email. The draft document is online. There are a few errors that we've got, obviously, that we were just discussing earlier. So keep in mind that most of those have been solved. But if you want to hash through the entire document, I'm all for it. Um, I really, as well as the subcommittee, really wants this to be as clear and as um, collectively created in terms of using various members from the community and have it be a community document and not have just simply the subcommittee and their input in this document. Not that it's not valuable, but it's more valuable to get it from the entirety of the community or as many people as we can. So it's, a, it's on the town website yep. under the Conservation Commission page? Yes, <laughs> under the Conservation Commission page. If you look at the bottom of the page where the other documents are listed and links, you can click on the Open Space Plan link. Once you get in there, there should be a folder for Draft Open Space Plan 2017. Actually, the draft's right at the front yeah. page. Yep. And then, yeah, I'll shift it to the front page. No, it is, it is. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> And that's the most recently, the one you've already gone through, the first responses. This is like the draft version two. So this is what's up there now, and I can actually change it tomorrow to include you and Ken's edits that have been hashed through. I'm not saying that because she's just here, but I mean, the, it's been gone through by a fine tooth comb by even people who aren't from the community just to get sort of a third party grammatical check and flow of the document itself. And I have received those comments back, um, so I will be updating it this week. But as of right now, it's um, the complete draft version that was done by the subcommittee. So, like I just said, I'll update that this week. So that's why there's a few minor errors still in there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I was agreeing with that. That's his name. Is incorrect still. I know, we fixed it though. We did fix oh. it, it's just not up there. I do apologize for that. All right, and so will you be doing any other public presentations about this? Um, public presentations, more of a shortened version. So the Conservation Commission, not tomorrow night, because that's when their next hearing is, but the first week of June, I believe, or second week of June, it will be up on the town page. Um, we will be covering the open space plan and seeing if the commission will accept it to be adopted. Um, as the last section basically just has action plan items, as I discussed before, in terms of what the community's been requesting and how we're going to implement that over the next five years, basically. Um, but so the short answer is yes. And I believe other departments may be discussing it as part of their agenda as well not necessarily as a formal um, item, but just to discuss it amongst the board and 
if they accept it, then to approve it and have a review letter so that we can take that and send it to the state when it's ready. Anything else? Okay, so in general, this is, has obviously been a few months work and I think a few years if you include the individuals before me who have been working on this and all the open space plans that basically continuously roll into each other. Um, and thank you for coming to listen to the open space plan summary. And again, I'm in my office for any questions, concerns, um, along with it'll be at the next Conservation Commission meeting if individuals couldn't be here tonight or didn't know about it. Um, it will be advertised on the next conservation agenda. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>